All right, today is the day and we are gonna do something a little bit different today. We are gonna be working on the tunnel. Now I've been putting this part off because I have been waiting to get the center differential, the transfer case, whatever you wanna call it, built to a point where I can put it into the car and we can form that tunnel around it. We need to narrow that tunnel down to be tied up against those things, just enough air to get some ventilation to keep them cool. But instead of me waiting for some things that have to occur before I can get that differential going and at least far enough long to try in here, we are going to make a foam mock-up today. Try it in there and uh, maybe get ready to build that tunnel. That tunnel is very important because that is the main structure going through our tub that's going to hold it rigid or at least hold the strength through it and the whole combination of the features of the tub will provide the strength, rigidity, and the twist prevention. Anyway, let's jump in, go take a look. Now I was gonna cut this thing out of foam and I had a hot wire cutter, but I have not been able to find that thing. And I am looking and looking for that thing. It was a simple one with just a transformer and a uh, rheostat on it. I'll look under here, under the new Leviathan tires, not there. How about here, looking everywhere. Well, we are going to have to just build a new one and that's a good time because I got lots of foam to cut in the future and I'm just going to build a really nice one with some added features. So run out, pull out my electrical supply storage bins and go through and get the parts I need to build one from scratch. Also run to the hardware store, picked up a little PVC conduit uh, box, use that as a little enclosure. And picked up also a little a light dimmer, 120 volt light dimmer, so we can control our voltage. And I got this transformer online from this place, Jacobs Online. And this guy set up kind of a cottage industry all based around hot wire cutting and uh, building model rockets. So if you want to get one, all the parts you need for transformers. So we've got this transformer and uh, all these little parts collected and we will kind of lay out what we're going to do for this thing. Going to be using these banana connectors for be able to plug our wires in that run from this transformer um, power supply over to our hot wire bow and a section of uh, switches, fuses, and indicator lights. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that transformer in the bottom of our box. We're going to put our components kind of a uh, panel mounted onto the lid of this thing. And so we will have a fuse that comes into an on-off switch, a dimmer switch, and an indicator light just to show that things are in operation, all from a 120 volt plug. And just a matter of wiring, coming in and feeding things as they need to go from the fuse onto the on-off switch, onto the dimmer, and then the indicator light and onto the transformer itself. So while I have my uh, little electrical a soldering station right next to my computer so I just jumped over to AutoCAD and thought I'd lay this out a little cleaner in case somebody wanted to also follow this whole thing along and build them for themselves. I have a little wiring diagram so you could pause here and look at that wiring diagram. Now I just make a real quick note that if you do that I found that there was a problem with the, the double pole double throw switch that I'm using to switch between voltages on the transformer and uh, I'll tell you a little more about that as we go on here but uh, Went out, drilled all the holes to match all these little panel mounted components and just started uh, putting them through their holes, putting all the nuts on the back to hold all the components in place. And then we'll just start wiring them and we'll just wire them in sequence as it would be the flow of electricity coming to this panel. So first thing it's going to run into is we're going to just put a fuse in line just to protect everything. Panel mount a fuse, put the wires onto that, and then that fuse will feed to our on off switch. Now we're gonna have two switches on this. One that we can just turn the whole box on, and then there's also a double pull, double throw switch. Because this transformer allows you to wire the output in a way that you can get either three volts output or six volts output. So the input, you can also wire at 110 volts or 220 here. 
And so when you gain the black wires together on the input and the red wires together on the input, you get 120 volt input. That's what we're going to do just so we can plug it into a regular wall outlet. So this uh, double pull, double throw switch that we're going to see here later on is going to be the last thing that we wire in line. Um, when I was on that Jacobs online and I ordered that transformer, I saw that he had some wiring diagrams and stuff for some of this stuff. So I jumped back on there and found a wiring diagram for this double pull switch that I had. And it seemed to be exactly identical to his wiring diagram with the same numbers on the bottom, numbered in the same way, three poles on each side. And so I wired it according to what he had on his uh, website. And that was my downfall. I should have just gone through and looked at it a little bit closer, got my own meter out and checked it. But then when I plugged this thing in, I got a little smoke coming out of the box and um, had fried a few things. So replace those things, ready to move on. And I rewired it. The wire diagram you saw before is good for the switch that I had, but if you get a different switch, you might check that. I'm just building a bow out of just some little ex aluminum extrusions for like a screen door. Put some metal brackets in the corners and I have a bow made. You didn't get to see too much of that, but uh, we're gonna jump in now and in AutoCAD where I'm working on this uh, center differential, I have some drawings that we're gonna uh, transfer to some files that cut out some templates out of just some eight and a half by 11 paper. So I've sent them over to my printer. I'm gonna trim those out. I had to print each piece in two. So I need to tape those together line up my lines and then I'll trim these things out and like I said I will just be pinning these to a piece of foam. Now my wife went on this uh, rampage for a while and bought all these uh, piece of furniture they're just like shelves that hold 12 inch by 12 inch um, cubes that like storage things and when you buy those things they come with all these nice flat sheets of foam so we're going to use those foam put our template on there and uh let our hot wire rip. Now this is sped up, of course. I wish I could uh, cut this fast and uh, smoothly. So once the outside's trimmed off, I can just run a line in, cut out these little holes. These little holes, I'm going to slide a piece of PVC pipe in that will represent the shafts for the differential. And then I'm going to put a little square hole in the middle as well, just to keep this thing from rotating. And I'll cut out a piece of uh, two inch by two inch by, I think it was like 14 inches long. That will hold our length dimensions on this differential and hold it from being able to rotate around those pipes. I have three of these things I'm cutting out just to show us the shape of this thing and the scale. So here I am uh, sliding the pipes in. Like I said, these uh, pipes represent, like I said, the uh, the rotating shafts of this whole assembly. And once we get this thing spaced out, it's time to try it in, but we are gonna put the transmission onto our engine and slide it into position because we're gonna, of course, align it according to that transmission in the output shaft of that transmission. Well, here's what we have as of finishing this. Not finishing because it's been a hellish last few days. With also added to that, the discovery of a little bit of a problem here. In that once we have our little mock-up in place, we find that our differential in the front is sitting about three inches too high. I'm gonna have to lower that down. That front bracket, I'll have to have it new water jet piece cut, put that in. But this is the layout in general. I guess you could see here, we got this uh, long output shaft. I'll be replacing that with a shorter uh, output shaft. This one, of course, was longer because it goes into the differential on a Corvette. But we will change that out to a shorter one. There'll be a universal on the end of that that runs to this stubby tube sticking out the top. That'll be our input with the viscous coupling. The piece of pipe on the next side to it that comes back here. And then it's kind of in a little bit of a joint there, you see. There'll be a universal there that sends a drive shaft back through that bearing in the wall, through that bearing, then back to the rear differential. 
That bottom piece of pipe represents the bottom output tube. It'll be chain driven off of the viscous coupling and into the front differential. So that's kind of the basic layout and about the shape of the center differential as well. Um, we do not have enough information until I can move that differential down to be able to build a tunnel so we didn't accomplish what we were after. And as you can see, it took me a couple extra days with some other things going on around here, but that's what we have. And we will get to see more video about this because, uh, well, more troubles, more solutions coming soon. Anyway, that's our video today. Thanks for stopping by. Come back and see us again.